Journey to the West, an audio drama series, Chapter Four, Part Two. And so Heavenly King Li and Ne Jia cowed out in gratitude before returning straight to their own palace. They counted their troops and named their commanders. They also had Ju Ling Shen, the giant divinity, as vanguard, General Fishbelly in charge of the rear, and General Yaksha to urge on the troops. Within moments, they were outside the southern gate of heaven and straight to the mountain of flower and fruit. They built their camps on flat land and sent the giant divinity out as challenger. The giant divinity received his orders and readied his things. With Xuan Hua Fu, the axe of arraying petals in his hand, he arrived outside the water curtain cave. He could see that outside the entrance were lots of monsters. But they were mere animals in messy formation, playing with their weapons while making loud noises. The giant divinity shouted, "You inferior beasts, go quickly to tell Bi Maowen that I, High General from above, have come here to subdue him by the imperial edict of the Jade Emperor. Tell him to come out and surrender soon, so you fellows can be spared injuries." The monsters all rushed into the cave to report. Disaster! Disaster! The Monkey King asked, "What disaster?" The monsters answered, "There's a heavenly general outside the door who called the great sage by your official title. He said he came here to subdue you by the imperial edict of the Jade Emperor, and he urged you to surrender soon so our lives can be spared." The Monkey King heard this and said, "Bring my armor." And in a flash, he put on the violet gold crown. Golden chainmail and the cloud-treading shoes. With the compliant golden hoop rod in his hand, he led the crowd outside and displayed their battle formation. The giant divinity stared at him, and what a fine monkey king he was! Golden armor on his body shining bright, golden crown on his head emitting light, one golden hoop rod held tight, two cloud shoes on his feet matching just right. Like blazing stars, his pair of strange eyes above his shoulders were his ears, pointy and hard, always transforming this body so upright. A loud voice ringing like bells and chimes. Here was Bi Ma Wen with his sharp mouth and gaping teeth. His mind aimed so high he wished to be the heaven equaling sage. The giant divinity yelled at the top of his voice. Unruly monkey! Do you know who I am? The great sage heard this and asked in haste, "Which little deity are you? I have never met you before. Introduce yourself now." The giant divinity answered, "Curse you, you evil macaque! You may not know me, but I am the heavenly general called Giant Divinity, the vanguard under the command of Heavenly King Li, the pagoda bearer of the celestial heights." I am here by the imperial edict of the Jade Emperor to accept your surrender. Strip your armor and submit to the mercy from heaven, so the animals on this mountain could be spared. If you dare utter half a no, I shall in an instant reduce you to powder. The Monkey King heard this and became furious inside. He shouted, "Insolent little deity, quit bluffing and no more wagging of the tongue." I could have beat you to death with a single strike of my rod, but I fear that no one would act as messenger on my behalf. I shall spare your life and send you back up as soon as possible. Tell that Jade Emperor that he didn't know how to make use of the talented. Elder Sun possesses immense power. How could he make me race horses for him? Look at the words on my flag. If you promote me to this exact title, I will wield no weapon, and naturally the world will be at peace. If you dare refuse, I will instantly fight my way up to the treasure hall of Miraculous Mist and make certain he is no longer sitting in his dragon throne. The giant divinity heard his words and hurriedly opened his eyes wide to stare at the direction of the wind, and there it was—a tall pole outside the entrance. On the pole was a flag, and written on the flag were four characters: Qi Tian Da Sheng. 
meaning the heaven equaling great sage. The giant divinity let out several cold laughter and said, Unruly monkey so ignorant about the world. How dare you be the screwed, thinking you could be the heaven equaling great sage. Now have a good taste of my axe. And aim straight at the head the axe did. The monkey king, on the other hand, was in no hurry. Holding his golden hoop rod, he fought back. What a spectacular fight it was. Rod was named compliant. Axe was called a rain pedals. A sudden meeting it was, not knowing which was the stronger metal. Axe and Rod, left and right, caught in a tangle. One possessed magic deeply hidden, the other was confident and boastful. Moves so magical they puffed clouds and mist. It only took a handful before the air was filled with sand and dust. A heavenly general may have powers granted by the way, but the Monkey King's transformations were inexhaustible. Rod going up like a dragon playing in water. Axe coming down like a phoenix passing through flowers. The giant divinity may be famous throughout the lands, but really his skills were no match against the rival hand. The great sage only needed a light twirl of his iron rod. One hit on the head could paralyze his rival's spot. The giant divinity could not handle the monkey king and suffered a blow directly to the head. He desperately attempted to block further attacks with his axe. But with a loud crunch, the axe handle was broken into two. The giant divinity hastily withdrew and fled in defeat. The monkey king laughed. What an abscess, what an abscess. I have spared your life, you shall deliver my message. Go on now. The giant divinity ran back to the entrance of the camp and went straight to see the pagoda-bearing heavenly king. He hurriedly knelt down, panting. That Bimawan is indeed immensely powerful. Your unworthy general is no match for him. I was defeated and have returned to be punished. Heavenly King Li said furiously, This fool has blunted our morale. Take him out and off with his head. From the side came forward Prince Nuja, who bowed and said, Please calm your anger, father, and forgive the giant divinity for his sins. Allow your child to battle him once. Then we will know what he has really got. The heavenly king accepted the advice and ordered the giant divinity to return to his camp as he awaited punishment. Prince Nuja put on his armor and jumped out of the campsite, dashing all the way to the entrance of the water curtain cave. Wukong was just about to withdraw his troops when he witnessed Nuja's fierce arrival. And what a prince he was! Childish tufts barely covering his scalp, yet down to the shoulders his flowing hair aligned. Magical and intelligent, elegant and refined. Truly a child of the legendary beast, indeed an immortal of the phoenix most divine. A progeny of the dragon, naturally unlike the mortal breed. At his tender age, certainly different from the worldly kind. Equipped with six enchanted weapons, flying, changing, his powers infinite. By the golden message of the Jade Emperor, he was appointed to the Divine Assembly, entitled Triple Shrine. Wukong approached and asked, Whose little boy are you? What do you want invading my gate? Nuja yelled, You unruly fiendish monkey, how could you not know me? I am Nuja, third prince of my king father, the Pagoda Bearer. By the imperial command of the Jade Emperor, I have come to arrest you. Hukong burst into laughter. <laughs> Little prince, your baby teeth have yet fallen and your fetal hair is still wet. How dare you talk so big. I shall spare your life and not fight you. All you need to do is read what it says on my flak. Report to the Jade Emperor that this is the office I demand. No more clash would occur before I convert to your side. Should you go against my wishes, I will certainly find my way to the treasure hall of Miraculous Mist. Nuja looked up and saw the four characters. Qi Tian Da Sheng, Heaven Equaling Great Sage. He said, How powerful could you fiendish monkey be? How dare you claim a title like this? Well, fear not, have a taste of my sword. 
Wu Kong said. I will just stand still and let you have a few swipes at me. Ne Jia was furious and shouted, Change! Instantly, he changed to the form of three heads and six arms. Looking truly fearsome, he also wielded six weapons in his hands. Those were the monster beheading sword, the monster cleaving knife, the monster binding rope, the monster quelling pestle, the embroidered ball, and fire wheels. All of them came straight at Wukong's face together. Wukong saw it happen and remarked in shock. This little boy is truly something. But quit being disrespectful and watch what I can do. Splendid great sage. With a shout of change, he also formed three heads and six arms. With a bounce of the golden hoop rod, it also tripled itself. Six hands holding three rods. This battle truly was earth-shattering. What a fight! Six-armed prince named Nuja against the handsome monkey king from a stone. Worthy rivals fighting for opposite causes. Their weapons flashed frightening colors, their moves heavy like the weight of monsters. Several rounds were enough to declare a victor, and the prince had no intention to give up and surrender. He launched all six weapons into transformation, spawning millions of attacks straight to the head. The Monkey King wasn't a bit scared, and only chuckled before fighting back with his rod in ease. From one to a thousand and thousands more, the flying rods covered the sky like flying dragons. All the monsters sheltered in their caves as the air turned gloomy and grave. Both sides went all out, yet neither knew who would prevail. The third prince and Wukong showed off their powers against each other for thirty rounds. The prince's six weapons had millions of transformations, but so did Sun Wukong's golden hoop rod. In midair, their weapons fell like raindrops and flashed like meteors. But still, neither could come above the other. However, Wukong had fast hands and sharp eyes. In the midst of all the chaos, he pulled off one hair and said, Change! And the hair turned into his own form, holding the rod to fend off Nuja. Meanwhile, his real self leapt behind Nuja's shoulders and hit him on the left arm. Nuja was in the middle of performing a spell when he heard the rod coming close. He was about to dodge, but couldn't manage to handle the attack. Suffering a direct blow, he escaped in pain after withdrawing his magic. All six weapons were retrieved as he returned in defeat. Back on the front, the Heavenly King witnessed all that was going on. He was about to lead his troops forward as reinforcement when the prince soon arrived before him. Frightened and shaken, he reported. King Father, that Bima Wen is really something. Your child cannot beat him even with all the power I have. I have already suffered an injury on the arm from him. The Heavenly King gasped in shock, saying, If this fellow is this powerful, how could we beat him? The prince answered, There is a flag outside his cave entrance with four characters written on it. Qi Tian Da Sheng, the Heaven Equaling Great Sage. He boasted that the Jade Emperor should appoint him to be the Heaven Equaling Great Sage, and all matters will rest. If this title wasn't given, he would certainly fight his way up to the treasure hall of Miraculous Mist. The Heavenly King said, If that's the case, we shouldn't further engage him. Let's return to the world above and inform His Majesty of these words. After that, we can send more troops to surround and capture this brute, and it wouldn't be too late. The prince was in pain and could not battle again, and so he returned to heaven with the heavenly king for the report. We will speak no more of that. Watch as the monkey king returned to his mountain in victory. The monster kings of the seventy-two caves and his six sworn brothers all came to congratulate him. In this hidden paradise and blessed land, they exchanged drinks in immense delight. All of a sudden, he said to his brothers, If I, your youngest brother, could call myself the heaven-equaling great sage, you could also call yourselves great sages. There was Niu Mo Wang, the bow monster king, who let out a roar. Wise words, worthy young brother, I shall be called the heaven-conquering great sage. 
Jiao Monster King said, "I shall be called the Sea Turning Great Sage." Peng Monster King said, "I shall be called the Heaven Disrupting Great Sage." King of Lions said, "I shall be called the Mountain Moving Great Sage." King of Macaws said, "I shall be called the Wind Channeling Great Sage." And finally, King of the Long Tail Golden Monkeys said, "I shall be called the God Herding Great Sage." At the time, the seven great sages were free to do whatever they pleased, and free to call themselves whatever they wanted. After a day of fun, they dispersed. Speaking of Heavenly King Li, who, along with the third prince and other generals, went straight to the treasure hall of Miraculous Mist and reported. Your subjects have led our troops to the world below by your imperial edict, with the goal of subduing the fiendish immortal named Sun Wukong. However, he was unexpectedly powerful, and we could not prevail against him. We wish your Majesty could send reinforcement to destroy him. The Jade Emperor asked, "He was merely a fiendish monkey. How powerful could he be that you need reinforcement?" The prince came forward and explained, "Your Majesty, please forgive your subject for sins deserving death. That fiendish monkey used an iron rod which beat the giant divinity first before injuring me on the arm. He put up a flag outside the entrance of his cave, which showed four characters: Qi Tian Da Sheng, the Heaven Equaling Great Sage. He said, if you grant him this title, he will withdraw his troops and accept the appointment." Otherwise, he will fight his way here to the treasure hall of miraculous mist. The Jade Emperor gasped and said, "How dare he be this arrogant? Order the generals to slay him now!" Just as they were talking, among the ranks came forward the great white ghost star. He said, "That fiendish monkey only knew how to throw around words." But he had no sense of class. Even if you wish to put more soldiers into the fight against him, it is unlikely that he could be subdued so soon, and he would just be a burden on the troops. Why not instead generously offer your compassion and mercy, Your Majesty, and once again release an imperial edict of pacification? Let him be the heaven equaling great sage, but make it an empty title, a title without pay. That's all. The Jade Emperor asked, "What do you mean by a title without pay?" The Ghost Star answered, "The title for him is the Heaven Equaling Great Sage, but he would have neither responsibility nor salary. We'll just keep him in captivity between the worlds in order to weaken his evil heart, so he can no longer sprout arrogance. That way, the world may regain peace and the seas could find tranquility." The Jade Emperor heard this and said, "Do as you suggested." Immediately, he released an imperial edict, and once again ordered the Ghost Star to deliver it. The Ghost Star again left the southern gate of heaven and straight to the mountain of flower and fruit. What he witnessed outside the water curtain cave was very different from his previous visit. The troops were mighty and fearsome. The air was murderous and bloodthirsty. All sorts of monsters gathered outside, wielding weapons of various kinds as they jumped and roared. The moment they saw the ghost star, they all rushed forward to attack. The ghost star said, "Chiefs, do me a favor and inform the great sage that I am the heavenly messenger of the emperor from above. I have an imperial edict here as invitation." The monsters ran inside to report. There's an old man outside claiming to be a heavenly messenger from the world above. He says he has an edict as invitation. Wu Kong said, "I'm glad he came. Truly glad. I bet he's the great white ghost star who came the last time around. That time to the world above, though the appointment was demeaning, I at least made a trip to heaven. And now I know my way in and out of the heavenly gates. Him coming a second time must mean well." So he told the chiefs to raise flags and beat drums, as well as assembling everyone in formation to welcome the guest. The great sage himself led his monkeys out with his crown and armor on. Outside his armor was the robe 
of yellow ochre, and on his feet were the cloud-treading shoes. He quickly came out of the cave and bowed politely, shouting, "Please come inside, elderly star. Forgive me for a belated welcome." The gold star stepped forward and entered the cave. He stood facing south and said, "I am here to inform you, great sage, of the following. Previously, you were unsatisfied with how low-ranking the post was, and escaped from the imperial stables. The officers there reported the matter to the Jade Emperor. His Majesty then asked, 'Everyone who receives an official title moves from low to high ranking. Why was he unhappy?' And so heavily, King Li brought Nurja to the world below to challenge you. They were unaware of your prowess and therefore suffered defeat. When they returned to heaven, they reported that the Great Sage had a flag and wished to be the heavenly Queen Great Sage. The military officials were still hesitant about this, but this old man here, risking punishment, spoke forcefully on your behalf, so the troops can be spared. I ask that you, Great King, be officially appointed to the new title. The Jade Emperor approved, and hence here I am. Wu Kong laughed and said, "For all the trouble you went through the last time, you still have love to spare this time around. Many thanks. You have my gratitude. However, I wonder if Heaven will let you hand out titles like Heaven Equaling Great Sage." The Ghost Star said. Only when this title was approved did this old man have the courage to come with the edict. Otherwise, you can blame me all you want. Wu Kong was overjoyed. He begged the ghost star to stay for the banquet, but was turned down. So the two of them leapt on auspicious clouds and arrived at the southern gate of heaven. Those heavenly soldiers and generals all gestured in respect as welcome. They went straight to the hall of miraculous mist. Where the ghost star reported, by your imperial edict, I, your subject, have summoned here Bima Wen by the name of Sun Wu Kong. The Jade Emperor said, "Come over here, Sun Wu Kong. We shall make you the Heaven Equaling Great Sage now. Nothing is higher ranking than this. Do not misbehave again." And once again, the monkey only gestured. And lightly expressed his gratitude. Then the Jade Emperor ordered the engineers Zhang Ban and Lu Ban to build, to the right of the Divine Peach Garden, a residence for the Heaven Equaling Great Sage. In the residence, there will be two lower offices, An Jing Si or Office of Tranquility, and Ning Shen Si or Office of Calmness. Each office will be staffed with immortal clerks who would act as aides. Officers of the five celestial dippers were tasked with accompanying Wu Kong to his post, along with two bottles of imperial wine and ten golden flowers as gifts. The hope was that he would since settle his heart and find a purpose, so there would be no more misbehavior. The Monkey King accepted the conditions faithfully and immediately arrived at his residence with the officers of the five celestial dippers. He opened the bottles of wine and shared them all with those around him. Once the star officers returned to their own palaces, Wu Kong settled down with a heart full of content and bliss. He now resided in the heavenly palace, without the slightest worry on his mind. Truly. His divine name forever inscribed in the register of eternal life, never falling in the world of transmigration, a feat that for ages will survive. We do not know what will happen next. Please wait until the next chapter.